Hello, everyone. I'm Patricia Rodriguez. I'm the Petrophysical and Geoscience, and Geoscience Advisor at Science Petro Geoconsulting. And today I'm going to be talking about the accelerated workflow for geologically driven well preconditioning. The idea is to get faster results filtering the noise, but not the geology. For any petrophysical project, we need to do log preconditioning before, uh, in, in order to get regionally consistent petrophysical results. The area consistency is affected typically by systematic data quality changes, like changes in contractor processing parameters, local well condition and vintages, etc. It is also affected by the real geologic variability, which is the one that we want to preserve. Doing the log preconditioning is critical in particular for large or regional scale data set. The goal is basically to filter the noise, not the geology, but this process is typically very time consuming. Preconditioning takes approximately 60% of the total project time. We, you know, in, in our experience, assuming approximately 200 wells with gamma ray, neutron, uh, photoelectric factor, and rho B, takes around 50 days for a typical, fi you know, final petrophysical project. And of that, at least one month, 30 days takes for doing the preconditioning. And it's also called like log normalization uh, or standardization. Uh, with the new accelerated workflow, uh, we are we have been able to measure at least three times faster uh, preconditioning process. So we can reduce that to at least uh, 10 days, uh, decreasing the overall time of the project. So what this workflow looks like, this is a partial automation that balances the speed and reli reliability. So we acknowledge that we need to do data preparation and selection of statistical interval. And by data preparation here, we mean uh, like name standardization, cleaning of tails, things that are, uh, or like washout, clean outs, some, some of the data processing. After that, we do the uh, interval statistics, we calculate statistics in a, in a specific interval to do a preliminary filtering. We do then some parameter selection that allow us to generate trends, filter the outliers, do some smoothing, and that process is done automatically by the computer. These are coded inside the computer to do this process, as well as the global normalization. Uh, with all this process, we generate uh, parameters for QC, which allows them to make QC decisions, and then we can actually change the parameter selection. This process takes only hours. And when I said hours, is just because we are doing some testing with the parameters. We are uh, normalizing or preconditioning one well at a time, sorry, one log, one type of log at a time. So it takes some time, but it's really quick. And after we are done with the process, we go to the petrophysical model. So what are the preconditioning highlights in this workflow? This is not a bl uh, black box. These are, this follows well-known geologic preconditioning rules. What contributes to the speed up of the process is that first that we have this partial automation that we have coding behind it, but also that we're trying to achieve 80% of the solution. Also, it generates parameters for QC we can map the rescaling factor that were used for the normalization. We can check the difference between the raw data and the normalized data. And all that is done in an automated way. This preconditioning process is adjusted by log type. And again, this follows typical, very well-known rules of uh, data preconditioning. So for gamma ray and, and neutron, we do bulk shift and rescaling, like stretch and squeeze. For density, PE, and sonic, we do just a bulk shift. For resistivity, when needed, we do some kind of transformation between lateral log and induction log. So the and the preconditioning parameters are the, the cutoff that we can implement for the, each of the logs. We have a smoothness parameters and some filters that are adjusted by each log, for log. And it's not only for log, it's also by project. So we can change those parameters by project. So we start with an interval of interest. We have, typically we need at least one top. We actually prefer uh, to work only with one top around the interval of interest. We then select uh, what we call a statistics interval. And it's typically at the same thickness independently of your stratigraphy. And the idea is that it's, a, it's basically has the same number of samples around your entire area. 
And in this example, we have 150 wells. We create the trends after filtering the outliers using petrophysical criteria. So we have the statistics per well, which are not necessarily talking, we're not talking here about the average, we're talking about like the P10, P90, P20, P80, depending on the, or the P50, depending on the type of shift that we're gonna do and the type of log. We map the statistics, we verify that the outliers are really outliers and are not a geologic, a geologic, a geology feature. And, and then we create the trends. These are the trends that are used for doing the, the global normalization. So after applying the global normalization, we keep track of the changes that may need a special attention. So we have, this is a cross plot of the normalized gamma ray versus the original gamma ray, and we can identify really easily because we're keeping all these QC, QC parameters that have, for example, received too much stretch or too much squeeze, and we have the ones that had only a small correction. We can also plot the, the wealth with the color with this, uh, we call it like the rescaling factor. So we can identify which wells had too much in a stretch and too much a squeeze. And we do, you know, we, let's say we take some extra attention to these wells. If sometimes this kind of precondition is required, sometimes it's not, so those wells are set aside. So one of the things that this workflow tries to achieve too is to preserve what we call the global statistics. So we're trying that when we when we look at the statistics of the original, for example, in this case, gamma ray versus the preconditioned gamma ray, the overall statistics are very similar because here we're just trying to eliminate outliers and eliminate noise. We are not we are trying to preserve the geology. So we and in the, the same scene is done when we are comparing the, the density versus neutron cross plot of the original logs versus the preconditioned logs. And you see both of the cross plots looks very similar because what we're really doing is moving some of the data inside the cross plots to the, the right place in order to expect a place based on the geology. In, in this case, we can see the original gamma ray showing the original trends. This is an example of the gamma ray normalization or preconditioning. We have, you can see here in the arrow to the left that we have the lower value of the gamma ray. You see that the red is the low values, the blue is the high values. And when you go to the north, we can see that we have an increase in that small interval, we have increase in the gamma ray. So, this is the original gamma ray. This is the, the preconditioned gamma ray. So you can see the changes. There are small changes in the wells, but the regional trend is preserved. It also, you can see also in map view that we have here the average original gamma ray for this interval. And we can see the erroneous values. And we can see now that after the preconditioning, the data has been uh, cleaned up but the regional geologic trends are preserved, which is what we're trying and what we need for the, for any further petrophysical modeling. So the advantages of the approach is significantly faster. We said we are reducing the time to one third. And the objective again is to get, especially in this larger data sets, to get 80% of the wells ready so we can start doing the petrophysical model and then take some time aside for the rest of the wells. The, as I said, between 80 and 90% of the wells are ready for further analysis. In the more recent projects that we did, we actually had like 95%, but it depends on the project and the quality of the data. It doesn't require manual selection of key wells. You know, this process of creating trends, some people implemented using just a small set of key wells. We could do that the same. We have the capability, but it's not required intrinsically in the, in the workflow. It identifies easily the wells that may need manual corrections. It provides flexibility to add wells using same trends. So if you are doing the, the project, for example, with 200 wells to start, and then you want to incorporate 400 more wells, you don't need to start from scratch. You can use the same trends of the first 200 wells and just add the wells to the normalized data set. It uses standard geologic, geological modeling tools, which has an advantage that I'm gonna uh, mentioned in the next step because it allows you to do some geological modeling at the same time. And it can be customized for any type of project or any type of area. So in those assumptions that we have uh, for this acceleration is that 
Well, the data is really ready for preconditioning. We have done some name standardization, the selection of the wealth with appropriate data, et cetera. Uh, we have also what we call a smoothly bearing log statistics, which means that if, if there are rapid changes in log statistics, we need to do independent preconditioning. That occurs when we have, for example, intervals with casing points, or when we have lateral changes across geologic features. So if you have a, a fault, your statistics may change drastically at that point. I mean, you can have, even if the, the, there is a lot of change in the area, it doesn't matter as long as the change is smooth. If we have something that is drastic and is not represented by the well, it's not being sampled by the wells, you need, we need to do that separately. So we, we also can handle that because we're using geological tools. So the code that we wrote is inside uh, a geological modeling uh, software. So we can create, you know, we can separate the field in, in two and just create two different preconditioning for different size of the field or the basin. We also assume that we're not doing additional work uh, in the problem wells. It can be done, but that's for definitely will like, increase the timing. So thank you for your attention. If you want uh, more information, you can of course contact us or visit us at SciSpectrum.